Okay. All right, Chief Tiger, uh, thank you for being here, first of all. Um, last time we spoke to you about the housing department was last November, and it was about a former housing employee that raised some concerns in a council meeting about some things he saw during his tenure. Uh, the reason we have you here today is because the HUD Office of the Inspector General has released some findings from 2013 to 2015, which was while you were in office. Um, I guess what we want to start with was, uh, what are your thoughts on some of these findings? Have you had a chance to review the report? Just very vaguely, but uh, I guess I would start out by saying that uh, on any audit, findings is findings. It's an opinion of an individual that actually is doing doing the audit. Uh, and what's, what's ironic to me is that on some of the findings that uh, are being brought out, that for a period of almost 20 years on some of the policies that uh, never, that's been referred to, uh, it's never been questioned before. Uh, and I think uh, when an individual came in and did the audit, audit uh, that uh, you know, is being questioned now because needing probably more of a thorough uh, uh, I guess explanation, which uh, which you know certainly is is uh, is something that uh, can be done. A finding is also a negotiating tool. If it's a finding that uh, you know there's some recommendations that can be negotiated out and how it can be addressed and how it can be uh, taken care of. Uh, you know, as far as I saw, there was really no major major issues. Uh, you know, the 200000 a tribe has to pay back. In essence, eventually, uh, the participant uh, in question is going to be paying that back at some point in time. So that money will be recouped. Uh, I think there's a, uh, a question about not having a policy in-house in, uh, in or on record or something like that. Uh, ironically, when an audit was performed prior to this one, that policy was available to uh, the single audit group that came in. It was also provided to this individual that was, uh, or individuals that were performing this last audit. And for some reason, uh, even though they had it, they couldn't find it. Uh, those types of things, you know, sometimes play into to audits and how they're performed. Um, so it, you know, it, it's ironic too that. Uh, uh, Prior to my administration, the previous administration to mine, the nation did have to pay back in excess of $1.3 million on some housing issues. Uh, yet, that didn't seem to be an issue at that time. And so, uh, I do want to thank uh, you and your staff for reaching out so that I could have this opportunity. Because uh, it seems to be a little bit of sensationalism that's being played with some of the commercial outlets. Uh, just running with the story of, of not having an opportunity for uh, what you're giving me to be uh, afforded that opportunity. Well, that's why we had you come in. Mm -hmm. um, you spoke of a process. Now, is that in reference to the waivers that were in question during the last time we had you on? Uh, I don't know if the questions were about waivers. I, like I said, I didn't. I just vaguely read o read over. Uh, uh, you know, the, the deal having to deal with the. I have one participant with the housing and how, how much that per participant should have been paying. Uh, I think uh, as far as uh, you know, a, a maximum on payments for housing, uh, that has been in existence for a number of years at a maximum of $350. Uh, I do know that uh, I received a lot of calls when there was a letter that was sent out uh, increasing everyone's or the possibility of everyone's payments. Well, I also know that that would probably, in essence, would affect about a little over 100 people that could probably afford the increase and probably need to have an increase in their payments. But not every participant should have received that letter. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, there's, there's a number of things that, that I think that, uh, you know, you look at, it, at that audit at some point in time, it, those things are negotiated out. And we do and continue, I'm sure, to have a good working relationship with Wayne Sims at, at the HUD office, the Southern Plains office. Okay. Well, uh, specifically, one of the findings they did have was in reference to the waivers. They said that those kind of processes are okay as long as they've reviewed it and approved it. And they said um, during that span of period in question that that was not done. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, number one, I think sometimes uh, people have to remember we're a self governance tribe. In other words, that we take care of our, our people. And a self-governance tribe basically can make decisions accordingly. Uh, 
on the waivers. Uh, I know that even the council at one time questioned whether or not it didn't come through them. That's an executive uh, process, you know, itself. Uh, and our deal was to provide housing uh, to people that, that needed it. And it was on a case-by-case -case situation. And so, yes, waivers were, were signed off on. But from my understanding, even with this new administration, there's been some waivers signed off on as well. Um, you talked about a previous administration and a 1.3 million. Was that all in one inspection that that occurred? Well, that was uh, having to deal with uh, the inability to use those monies to build homes uh, in a timely fashion. And those were monies that had already been in our coffers for a number of years. So that was uh, funds that weren't expended before the end of the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Were you aware that the audit was being conducted at any time while you were in office? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I didn't have a problem with that at all. Uh, see, in my background, I served on our housing board for a number of years with the nation. I've also ran a housing authority program. So very familiar with you know some of the processes that we go through. Didn't have any problems with the audit itself. I think that I welcomed it, if, if I remember right. Anytime an audit is going to be performed, you know, that is a function that uh, we as elected officials should always welcome. Okay. Well, I think we've just about got everything covered that we wanted to. Is there anything else you wanted to share with citizens before we let you go? Well, you know, uh, it's unfortunate that, uh, that to some degree that a lot of things that are being questioned and and these things, again, can be worked out or being politicized to a large degree. Uh, and I don't think that's who we are as Muscogee Creek people, as I've always said. You know, uh, I think that any time there's a policy in question that, uh, you know, those things can be addressed in a, in a uh, manner that is uh, welcomed by all elected officials. Uh, to arbitrarily send out a letter, uh, you know, without the process in place that we have, for instance, to. You know, we just can't, as an executive branch, uh, uh, sometimes just make a decision and run with that because of the fact that uh, on any policies or whatever, those has to be, you know, brought before the council. And so, uh, you know, there's a number of things that, that uh, uh, you know, if I was a vindictive person, I'd be, you know, I'd be pointing fingers too. But that's not who we are as Muscogee Creek people. I think one of the things that we take pride in is that We've been successful as a nation, one of the most successful nations in the country for a period of time since the late 70s, early 70s, because, you know, of, of the things that we, we were able to take advantage of and continue to take advantage of to make sure that our citizens are provided with good service. And I see that as uh, being continued, uh, you know, and, and I think it's a transition, maybe to some degree, uh, with people that uh, don't under fully understand that uh, sometimes uh, these things, uh, uh, if you don't understand it, can easily be used in another manner. Okay.